As you can see here, we got the engineering design. We're teaching Simone how to do the plumbing. Oh, sweet. Leave it open, Nancy. Check at that. Simone did this all by herself. She was old and neglected, so we cut her to bear holes and built her up from the ground with our blood, sweat and tears. So follow our journey as we plan to sail her to new destinations and make lasting memories. Thanks for tuning in to another week's episode with us. Hope you enjoyed this episode to come. It was Plumbing was a... Was it good? It was good. It was good. It's satisfying. We're at the satisfying stage, so wherever wherever we do something, it's nice. Yeah. And Everything's coming together. It's starting to look good. We can see change, which helps a lot because if you don't see change, it sucks. One thing with the whole boat building, I've realized that, especially with the plumbing now and the and the electrical, is when you're at home, you open your tap and water comes out. And do you really know what goes on behind? getting the water to your taps and watching Ricky do the plumbing and te him teaching me how to do the plumbing it's opened my eyes to how much work goes behind the plumbing and it's not just opening your tap and getting water it's there's so much more to it so I can say I'm very pleased to have learned how it's, <laughs> how it's done because a lot of people take those things for granted and um, so it was really cool to to learn that and I see why people charge so much for it now because yeah. it, it takes long, it's, it's, a, it's not an easy task. So hope you guys enjoy it and keep, keep giving us a thumbs up and sharing our videos. If you guys can't support us on Patreon, that's fine. Give us a share. Every share, every like, give us a thumbs every up. nice comment counts. <laughs> yeah, keep, on, keep those comments coming and for you hardcore plumbers out there, let us know how we did. Yeah. Cheers. We're starting with the plumbing in the aft in the aft cabin. So we're through here is where we're gonna put the the freshwater shower for the dive platform. So if anyone comes out and they want to rinse themselves off, we're gonna put it over there. We'll put two there. We'll put the the high pressure one for the deck wash, which will be a salt water pump that will run through this underneath the bunk here, which will also feed the same pump is gonna feed the the water maker. So we'll turn that pump on as you want to use it. So. That pump will go underneath here. We'll go there. So two, one will be fresh water, one will be salt water. And the fresh water system on the boat, we're gonna run with these John Guest pipe and fittings. I spoke to a lot of plumbers and they say, if you use it all John Guest, so the fittings and the pipe, you won't have problems. If you start mixing this stuff with the cheaper fittings, you're gonna have leaks. As you can see here, we got the engineering design. As per the engineer, <laughs> we're gonna, what we're going to run is a dual pump system. So there's the tanks for each hull, a pump for each tank, and then this tank majority will feed the the port side, and this tank will feed the starboard side. But we do have a interlinking pipe if we want to cross feed between the two tanks. The kind of the layout, just to limit the amount of pipes running to have completely two individual systems that run on both sides of the boat. So I think having the two two pumps, one running this hole, one running this hole, also gives us redundancy. If something fails on the one side, we still have the other side of water and, and vice versa. So we're gonna start feeding this this pipe. And it's quite a cool pipe, it's pretty expensive. Um, it's got like an inner little, right over there. See, it's got that little inner ring. It takes one of these, wherever the fittings go, it takes one of those on the end, and then it takes the fitting. The fittings look like this. They're completely plastic. And let me show you how cool they are. It's like a quick snap and fit. They're pretty good. I mean, the, the system is, is very, very nice. So you've got the piping there. You've got these little seals that just go on the end. Push it in. Loosen this one up. Push it in there. I'm not gonna do it now because I don't wanna reuse these. I just wanna kind of, you just push it in there and twist it tight and done. That's a connection made. So they're super easy. And it's hand tight. I mean, Mo's gonna start feeding through there. So Mo's, push that pipe in the bottom there, please. That conduit that we put in before. The bottom is water. The bottom is water. And the top is electrical. 
disposal feeded line through, which runs through the cabinet. So we're going to run it to about there. That's where the connection will be to the to where the plate's going to be. So the back will be here. Always leave a bit extra, then you know you're safe. This area actually still needs to be painted. Hotel management. So one of these will go into there. So it's got a double O-ring on these. And guys said you can use it without, but I'm not going to take a chance and do it. So that goes in there nicely like that. This one pushes nicely in the other side. And use one of these. These, uh, it's like a pipe cutter. But I mean, it, it really cuts it like perfectly. It's like super sharp, cuts it perfect every time. Put that in there. Then take this one, make sure that it's loose. Stick it in until it stops. And then hand tighten. And then that one's in. And we hand tighten that. There's our first connection. And we push that one all the way in. And there's a retaining clip, I just don't have them now. I'll I will get some of them in the week. And then we measure up for our second connection, which will be over here. Get over there. Cut it off. And I'm only putting joints in areas that I can access and in the rest of the places where I can't, I'm not going to put any joints. And a good way to tell is these pipings got markings like that and you know if you cut it on the marking that when you push in it must line up to the next marking. I'm just not putting it in now. That fitting will fit like that, will look like that when it's done. So I've still got a paint inside there, that's why I'm not putting the second fitting in now. We straightened out the pipe and measured it, and then drilled new holes to run it through our galley. So we still need to paint that area, we're just feeding it through for now, and then we'll take it out once we've got the right length cut. I had walked over our bilge hatch door and got rid of Ricky's drawing, so he had to redo his Picasso artwork. We then cut the hose for our crossfeed for our tank and made the holes for the PVC pipe that will fit into the holes which we will run our plumbing through. That over there will be the cross feed for the tank and will come, a hose will come in through there, down underneath here. Here's where the secondary pickup is. So we'll take it down that way and the fill is underneath there. So another thing I'm trying to do is avoid using as much bends in that as possible. The guys say that those bends are perfect, but I mean, I suppose the less bends you got, the less chances of leaking. So I just bend it with one of these, and then I'll feed the pipe through there. Plumbing takes a lot of measuring and cutting of pipe. We had also ran our gas line which we then had to later move because, well, it wasn't on code. You learn new things every day. So what we're going to do is install, this is our shower. There's a water heater that goes, that's like that. There's obviously going to come an access cabinet gas line, but we want to put this in the back here. And the inside of the shower gonna come out over there. We get to where we want the middle of it to be. 
We don't want too low, we don't want too high. I'm gonna miss the gas line. That's where it's gonna fit. So now we've got a marker to start from and we can just hook it up. We then cut the hole for our mixer to fit into. And now we'll just ream it open to make a snug fit. So there we go. That's the fitting. Once it's fitted, that's what it's going to look like. And we just add the handle and then we add the little the spout with the shower head. So we've got the fitting in and all I've done is put two screws on the outside. I still need to take it off, seal the area there nicely with the epoxy primer and urethane paint before I fit the whole unit complete. And then seal all of that with a marine adhesive. So you can see like that, I just made the hole. I still need to seal all of that nicely around there and paint it in uh, primer and paint. So that goes on like that, that goes on there. Now I need to decide where this goes. So if I put it here and you leave it in place, it's gonna spray out. So over there and over there. The thing is when you're sailing, to a certain extent that's what this cable is going to be, but we could just tie a rope around it or something like that so it doesn't whack around the whole time. When you take it off, you can also, while it's plugged in there, you can hose yourself down in the shower. Start off with our first connection that we've got. Make sure that we've had it nice and square on that line. Put the tube support, put the support in. There we go nicely and now what this is teeing off is from there to the pump the pump's going to be mounted in there this is the cold water supply to the galley and to cross feed to the tank then make sure that it's up to the next marker yes it is There we go, got our first T installed. We then carried on adding and more for things. There are only a few more fittings. We've got the hot supply, cold supply, and we've got the hot that goes to the bathroom, and this one goes to the galley. And I'm just marking them with some insulation tape, some red insulation tape, blue insulation tape but I'll write afterwards with our printer we'll mark exactly where they're going and whatnot. so that's how that looks at the moment and we're just adding ends on this one so that then will take a flexible hose from here and into the supply of the water heater and that one will stand over there and hook up straight into that one just get some PTFE tape it's just plumber's tape pretty much there all three are on and that will slide in there and then we'll hook up that one into there just like that and the other one into the other side there we go that's gonna fit in there this one first because this is a twist one there we go. and now we do the cold supply T connect and that's for the washing machine and the gas valve that one will connect down here and the gas valve will be right about here we'll have a shut off valve and i'll stick those two in in this little one yes that's what we're hooking up there now to the mixer that one goes to the washing machine and then I still need to hook this guy up to a T to a T that comes down here. So teaching Simone how to do the plumbing in case we have a leak, she can become the new plumber. And obviously, she's a way better looking plumber than I am. Thank you, babe. Okay, you gotta get a T a T 
teepees. Both. Does it look like a teepee? Equal teepee, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Loose on both sides. Okay, so loose and the bottom one. You, you just, just pop it in. In all the way, make sure, double sure. Yeah. Okay, and then twist it tight. Twist it tight, yeah. The single like. Stick a T on there. Add a little T off to there. Okay. Cool. And you see the blue and the red tape? Yeah. What does it mean? Hot and cold. Yep. Good idea. The system is really nice. It's a bit expensive to kind of get started, but once you get going, these things are pretty expensive. They're like $30. I thought it was pretty expensive for a pair of cutters. The pipe for a roll is like $50. The fittings, like the normal standard fittings, they're from $3 up to $10, depending on what, what one you want to get, like the valve, the special valves and that for it. But a few boat owners told us that we should use them. Yeah. Two guys that I've sailed on had this installed on their boat and they said they'd never had a leak, so I must say it is super easy to do it. It really is plumbing for dummies. This stuff with us you get you get another one that doesn't have a ring here, but once you put it in the pipe there, this is standard 15 mil fittings, so it plugs onto any other fittings. You can use a brass couple fittings and everything once you put the pipe support in there. So yeah, you gotta put spit on them. You do, they hurt your yeah, freaking They're a bit tough to go on. So these are push fit ends, but then you gotta push this thing out and there's a locking ring that we've ordered to get because for some reason the store that sold this didn't have the locking rings. This is the standard fitting, same as this one. Adapt from there, from the brass piece to here. And these are like, I think $2. But now we go from there into that one. And then that one is a tightening type one. So I think it's called a secure lock. As you can see, all of this is still loose. I haven't secured it yet, because I want to seal the inside there. So now from here to the water heater, we'll have two flexible hoses. And the reason for that is obviously the reason, flexible. So once it comes from there, in here, in here, short ones. And that's beautiful. And then we'll have the gas valve, which is a gas pipeline. Would be exactly here. A shuttle valve, and there'll be a. Uh, th th this thing takes a nice cover that comes on here, a nice um, overrider co cover, and we'll have a shuttle valve over here. Sweet. Leave it open, I don't see. And then exactly there where you see that pipe, pull that pipe on? This one. Yeah. Yes. And that's our gas line. So we're just gonna have that with the shuttle valve way. Right in the middle. So even a dummy will see it immediately. We'll hit him in the, the face. The dummy is me. <laughs> Check at that. Simone did this all by herself. I don't do sh. She wired everything up. She left uh. a couple of wires out on the side there, though. <laughs> but yeah, she put them in. She varnished those doors. Man, oh man. And we're missing two doors. Well, there's a lot of doors missing. But oh, there's a door missing everywhere. But we don't have there's some space doors there. there. There's some doors over there. So, you can take our shower head off and sit down on our seat and well, what's so cool about that shower head? So what's cool about the shower head is that you have this function here in the middle which only allows you three sets of five holes so it's super efficient and it only allows five to six liters per minute which is great for us because we're on a boat and you don't have the endless supplies of water we need to do the floors then we're waiting for the drain coming all the way from America Jeez, what a mission it was to find drain. Oh, well, we got one. But we had to order one. <laughs> Not from South Africa. I do like our shower, I must say. It's really nice. Are we going to put a shower curtain? Yeah, just a little stainless steel rod shower curtain. That's it. Keep it light. 
keep it simple. We're probably gonna do that for our windows as well, just like a stainless steel thingy with can, no, not can, not can, not can not canvas. Material. Material can, canvas material. Stay tuned till next week where we carry on with our plumbing. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe below if you haven't already and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to support our production and join our awesome patron family, the link is in the description below. Thanks to our awesome new patrons, Mark Miller, Louis van der Marwe and Peter McKeon.